Hello and welcome to this video which is part two of this series on rectangular waveguides. Last time we derived the wave equation for the space inside the waveguide and we got an expression for EZ in the Z direction. The coefficient of Z is minus gamma which is a convention for waveguides so that the wave attenuates for positive values of gamma. We're going to derive the expression for EZ which will look like this when we multiply separate functions of X, Y and Z all together with no functions that contain two or three of these variables mixed together since they are variables separable. To solve for the rest of the wave in the X and Y directions we have to pick a mode which can be either transverse electric, transverse magnetic or transverse electric and magnetic. In the transverse electric mode or TE mode the electric field is transverse in the waveguide so EZ is set to zero and HZ is left to be calculated using this fact. You can see on this diagram that the electric field is transverse to its direction of propagation having no component in the Z direction of the waveguide while H does dip into the waveguide and so isn't transverse to its direction of propagation. In the transverse magnetic mode or TM mode the magnetic field is transverse to its direction of propagation in the waveguide so HZ is set to zero and EZ must be calculated using this fact. You can see that the electric field is not transverse to its direction of propagation. Then the TEM mode is where both the electric and magnetic fields are transverse in the waveguide like they are in empty space. This mode can't exist inside the waveguide as we'll find out later. Now to find the waves for the TEM mode being the easier mode to work with. HZ is going to be set to zero and we're left to find EZ. Now to solve this equation as a function of X. It is a wave in the X direction so it must be some sort of sinusoid function. We can see that it must be one of the standing waves in the cavity as shown that has a value of zero at the walls. So this function must be variable separable and can be expressed as a multiple of these three functions. There is a more formal way of showing that it is variable separable but for now we can say it is variable separable because the standing waves in the X direction can in theory bounce off the walls forever without straying in the Y or Z directions. The function X is a sinusoid function and must be expressed as this general sinusoid equation. The other two functions may be coupled into this function h and so be ignored for now. And so this is what EZ is now equal to. The field EZ is equal to zero when x is equal to zero that is when it is at the left hand wall. So therefore it must be a sine function since if a cosine term was present then EZ would never be zero at the wall and EZ is also equal to zero at the right hand wall when X is equal to A. We'll substitute all of this into this equation for EZ. Then this sine function must be equal to zero because it is the only term that can be non-zero when X is not equal to A. We can then solve this equation for kx because the sine function will be zero whenever this equation is true. This is what kx is equal to. We'll substitute this term in for kx to give the solution to equation x. And so this is what the function containing the variable x is equal to. Now to work on the y part of the wave equation which is downward facing and which reflects off the top and bottom walls of the waveguide. We'll start off with this equation here. So this is what EZ is in terms of all of these variables and it is variable separable 
So functions of each of these variables can be multiplied together. This is what the function capital Y is in terms of Y. We know it solves the wave equation and it can't be an exponential function because it must be zero at the walls. So it must be this general form of the sinusoid equation. And we can couple the other functions of x and z together and treat them as this single function g. So this is what e z is equal to as a function of all these three variables x, y and z. From the diagram we know that e z is zero when y is equal to zero because it is touching the bottom wall of the waveguide. So the function y must be the sine function because if there was a cosine function included then it wouldn't be zero at y is equal to zero. E z is also zero when y is equal to b because this is when it touches the top wall of this waveguide. So we can substitute all of these values into this equation which gives us this equation. The only term we can set to zero without making this equation permanently zero everywhere is this sine term. This sine equation is true when this is true and we'll introduce an integer n which will be equal to any positive or zero integer. Solving this equation gives us this value for ky. So ky can have an infinite number of values. So this is the value of the function y which contains the variable y and we're ready to plug all of these values in to find ez. Now to put all of this together and calculate ez. These are all the expressions x, y and z that we'll substitute in to get ez. After multiplying them together we get this expression for ez as a multiple of these three expressions. So now it's time to calculate which modes exist that is what values of m and n can this equation exist for. If m is equal to zero then ez is equal to zero everywhere. When we substitute m is equal to zero into this equation we get this equation which gives us this equation containing a sign of zero and this gives us an equation which is a group of expressions multiplied by zero which gives us ez is equal to zero so ez and hz are zero everywhere it will be shown later that because the rest of the fields like hx and ey are equal to sums of ez and hz then h and e will be zero everywhere in the waveguide so the mode m is equal to zero cannot exist in the waveguide similarly ez will be zero when n is equal to zero after substituting n is equal to zero into this equation we get this equation which gives us this equation containing a sign zero term. And this gives us this equation containing a zero multiplied by a group of expressions, which gives us ez is equal to zero everywhere in the waveguide. So e and h are zero everywhere in the waveguide. So the mode with n is equal to zero cannot exist either. So the modes for tm for which n or m are zero can't exist. So we write this down like this with m and n subscripts at the bottom and specifying that neither of them can be zero. We can also write them out with the zero in the subscript saying that they don't exist. 